Uh, Your Excellency, the Vice President of uh, Malawi, Malibuanji, it's a common to be here. Honorable Ministers, Minister of Bangladesh, other Ministers, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, happy birthday. I think uh, you deserve another round of applause at this moment in time. <laughs> the speakers just are saying how, how well you did uh, the last 40 years. Uh, I will try to say how well you can do the next 40 years. Uh, it is a honor, a privilege for me to be here, representing Commissioner Mimitsa, who brings uh, your, his uh, salutations to you. I want to say I'm not an agronomist. I'm an engineer, financial specialist, an economist, an ambassador, but I'm not an agronomist. But uh, I spend more than 50% of my time professionally on agriculture, food systems, conservation agriculture, climate change in agriculture, nutrition. And on top of this 50% of my professional time, I spend another 20% of my personal life on food. And uh, this is just enjoying. On Saturday, I will harvest my olives to have my olive oil. Um, the EU, the European Union, is a political actor. This is a difficult moment for all of us after what has happened. Now, political strength, solidarity, union has to be shown, and uh, we operate in development also to address the root causes of uh, uh, migration, the root causes of uh, conflicts, the root causes of uh, um, instability. Development is part of the solution. Food, in this, is a big part of the, the solution. When I say we are a political actor, I mean that we don't deal with agriculture and development in a separate manner from our political dialogue with our partner countries. I lived and worked in many countries in Africa, in the Pacific, in the South America, and I can tell you that our experience is always a blend of political issues together with development issues. Food policies are essential driver for success of the EU development approaches. I was called in 2008, after the World Food Prize crisis, to run the EU food facility. And uh, I share the agreement uh, with uh, my colleague from USA that there was a problem in going down in the investments in agriculture. Agriculture was uh, in the late uh, 80s, 90s, almost abundant. And then we had to pick it up. And I totally support these linkages, that agriculture is more than any other sec sector and a neighbor and a trigger of development and growth. Food policies today face multiple challenges. Agriculture must become more sustainable on a dwindling resource base while having to feed and nourish an increasing number of people. For the future, I believe the following three elements will strongly influence food policies. And these are the three wor key words that I would uh, leave you. One is uh, dignity. The second one is uh, market failures. And the third one is last mile, impact scale up. Dignity. Without a change in the inner paradigm, paradigm of farming, we go nowhere. Farming must become a job that leads farmers to have a family paying for their children to go to university, to paying for them to have a very comfortable life. Today, farming is seen in a negative manner. People, young people move to town, abandon the land, they don't do farming, why? Because farming does not offer the perspective, even uh, intellectually and morally, to so action must drive a change in this perceiving farming uh, as a very good job to do, something that will uh, lead you. And, and this uh, must uh, shape fundamentally our research agenda, our policies. Two, market failures. We, uh, the Commissioner uh, Mimitz has launched at Expo uh, Milan in uh, 16 October an initiative called AgriFi, Agriculture Financing Initiative, of those SMEs that are scaling up. So I totally support the chief economist from Ethiopia. Small order farmers can become entrepreneurs, are in fact entrepreneurs. This is the private sector that we talk about. 
They are small, they are not enabled, they don't have means, but they are the private sector. So we have to bring them to scale. And today, to risk, the markets are failing to provide the right finance to these people. So AgriFi is an initiative bringing patient capital to these SMEs, even micro uh, entrepreneurs, in order for them to invest. Not in one year, not at 20% or 30% interest rate, but six, eight years at a very low interest rate. AgriFi, and I look at my American colleague, uh, can follow a joint efforts by all forces. As we are doing with the USAID on electrification, uh, where we are working together and pulling resources together. I hope the same can, we do, uh, can be done for uh, agriculture. Number three, scale up. Research can do great to have an impact. You mentioned Schengen number of achievements. That was mentioned also by other speakers. I want to add to that that what makes the CGIR different from academic world is the fact that we plug research into action and impact. And without that impact, in fact, uh, we'll have no sense to have a consultative group. And today, impact is so desperately needed that I couldn't uh, find a better moment uh, for you, the researchers, this invaluable uh, value that is in this room, researchers, Young people, they, they, they want to join IFPRI, because IFPRI is a solid reputation on the research side, and this brain must be used to have this impact, to, to, to do a game changer. So for me, scale up, and the last mile, reaching the farmers with research. Think at your research objective, not as a book or a, as a publication on the internet, but as a better life condition for a farmer. If you do that, then uh, the impact will be visible and will achieve. So I do, uh, as I repeat always in the Fund Council of the CGIR, I think uh, what is the extremely high value of the international research on agriculture must be brought to fruition much more to have this game change. And I wish sincerely IFPRI to scale up and uh, reach the last mile in the next 40 years. Thank you.